today's episode, we chat with postdoc professional master's student John Nguyen. After earning a bachelor's degree from UC Riverside, John moved on to medical school and became an OBGYN. During this interview, he tells a story about how his medical device idea led him to an application to attend KGI. With the skills he has gained in the PPM program, John earned a job opportunity in December, five months before the commencement, which will be held this May. To begin, John, how did you first become interested in coming to KGI? I had been working on a medical device project for as long as I can remember in uh, residency. Uh, I am an OBGYN, and uh, throughout the course of my residency career, I thought about a way to detect um, uh, preterm labor. Um, Currently, there's no (coughs) devices capable of doing that directly. And so I came up with this, uh, I came up with a way to detect it, and it's been in in my head for such a long time because I couldn't get anyone to tell me how to get it to industry, how to develop it, how to get funding, uh, who to talk to, and I sat on it for like seven years. Um, and then UCR and KGI had some sort of a articulation agreement. And I still get emails from UCR once in a while, and all of a sudden this email popped up in my inbox. And I said, well, UCR students apply to KGI for free. Um, and I thought, well, let's look it up. And lo and behold, the PPM program and the MBS program stood out. Uh, really well. Um, I was working full-time as a physician, so I didn't know whether or not I could complete a two-year program with the MBS. But the PPM program, I thought, would be a wonderful program, but I didn't know whether I would get the proper training. I I didn't know. Um, I applied. I got a call from Shannon Braun. I came to her office. she asked me the same question you did. Uh, you know, why are you interested in KGI? And I, I point blank told her I needed some way to learn how to get my medical device to industry. I really did. And she introduced me to Professor Sterling. And he advised the PPM route would be the correct way to do it, especially that I was working full time. And he initially said that, you know, working full time and going to school full-time would be a, a big challenge. Uh, but here I am, uh, six weeks away from graduation. And obviously, you know, Shannon and, and Dr. Sterling gave you an indication of what the program was like. In those first few weeks or few months, was there a moment that stood out where you realized even more in reality that it was the right fit for you, the PPM program? I did not have any doubt that the PBM program was the correct one for me. Um, I immediately got into contact with current students as well as alums. And I went to the uh, barbecue in May, and I met Asish Thomas. Um, and I met so many other students, uh, the current students as well as my current classmates right now who are just coming in. And we got along really well. I met Professor Hickerson, I met Professor Stein, Dean Casper. I remember pretty much everyone that I met, and uh, I was very excited about talking to them, maybe too much about <laughs> about what I wanted to do, but they all listened, and, and they said that this is a great program for you, and I have no doubt about it. Can you share a bit about what makes KGI unique? I can name three things. Number one, Preparation for interviews is key. Uh, I've never been more prepared for any interviews at all in my past than when I came to KGI. Uh, it started from orientation. During yes, during uh, during orientation, and pretty much every day, every class, uh, every lunch hour meetings, everyone was preparing students for interviews, interview streams, how to prepare resumes. Um, I was really prepared. One of the key thing about my preparation was that I I got one of my classmates to help me prepare for the interview. I mean, 
basically to do a mock interview, we broke down the the items on the job description and we tackled it just like it were to be a project or um, yeah, just like it, it, it if it were a project. We broke it down, find our answers for everything, did an actual presentation, and that's how I got my uh, current job right now. That's a good segue, but can you describe where you work and what job responsibilities you deal with on a daily basis? Thanks to uh, what I've learned and what I have experienced at KGI, I was able to get the job as the chief medical officer for Queens Care Health Centers in downtown LA. It is a collection of five large medical clinics, uh, health centers, uh, comprised of over 55 uh, healthcare providers, some physicians, dentists, podiatrists, um, you know, pharmacists, uh, as well as mid-level providers. Uh, it, we serve basically uh, the underserved, that is people whose income are 100 to 200 times below the federal poverty levels. And a lot of them are undocumented. And uh, so we serve them throughout the five clinics uh, based all around downtown LA, as well as the East LA. Uh, we serve annually over 120,000 patients visits. Uh, it is a faith-based organization uh, founded by um, uh, Catholic sisters from Europe, and uh, it's been around for over a hundred years. the The clinic itself is is relatively new, but the organization has been around for over a hundred years. And we've been hearing that it's become sort of a pipeline for KGI alumni and current students. Can you talk a bit about what's developed there and how the KGI skill set is a good fit for Queens Care? Well, I guess I didn't want it to be by myself at at uh, at Queens Care Health Center, and so I, there were lots of projects that needed to be done. Actually, uh, mainly in data analytics as well as business analytics, business intelligence. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't think of it, but uh, healthcare has lots and lots of what we call metrics measurements. Uh, the Health Resource and Services Administration or HRSA um, asked the federally qualified health centers to record lots of data called metrics, measures. And there are so many, it's hard to keep up with. Uh, but that's how one gets funded as an FQHC. And we have to send these reports to HRSA uh, pretty much every year. And But having a collection of these data helps the clinics as well as the chief medical officer and the CEO and the CEO uh, provide quality improvements and how to perform better. And we didn't really have these data analysts in the pipeline at the time. And I spoke to uh, my CEO as well as the VP of HR. I said, well, I bet you I can get you, get you a few people right away. And I did. Um, Without going through the normal channels, I introduced uh, four to five resumes from my TMP uh, classmates, actually. Uh, several of them belong to my uh, team master's project, as well as my classmates uh, at the time that I'm in KGI. They applied, impressed the, uh, the, uh, the top, uh, top brass during the interviews, and were offered pretty much the same day. Uh, three of them are working right now as we speak uh, on a part-time basis, and uh, one more will be starting upon graduation. And we are hoping to try to get several interns in there as well. Yeah. And uh, on that last part of the question, how do you feel like the KGI skill set made them a good fit and is now uh, making them a good fit in their current roles? I think it's about thorough preparation. Uh, I think TMP really made us prepare really well for all eventualities, uh, how to conduct research, how to, pre how to, to perform presentations. Uh, the, the way that I learned how to present before I came to KGI was vastly different from how I present now as a KGI uh, graduate student. And we bring that to our work. Uh, in our thorough preparation, in our professionalism, and uh, 
And the other word that we we banter around a lot now is deliverables, and that's all. That's how we talk about a lot of um, a, how we talk about a lot of uh, things at work now is when's the deliverable, when's the deadline, and and we meet the deadlines and we deliver great results. And now being so close to commencement uh, for yourself individually, what will you be thinking, I guess, as you cross the stage, reflecting on just being able to juggle all this, all the uh, deliverables and, and projects that you have going on here at KGI, plus your work assignments there as chief medical officer, but just reflecting on the, the past year. Yeah, I thought I was really crazy uh, to go to school full time, uh, be fully employed, and I have a six month old. As a matter of fact, my daughter was born in during the first semester of uh, while I was at KGI, actually. And the day after she was born, I was online doing Minerva classes. <laughs> so uh, um, I, ha- I would have to say that uh, it was very challenging, but definitely doable. And uh, the KGI experience uh, made me a much better uh, uh, person, a much better doctor, and definitely... Uh, a more analytical professional. Well, my last question was going to be, was going to be what is something else you're involved with outside of KGI that may surprise people? Obviously, having a six-month-old keeps you busy enough, I'm sure, but uh, is there any other hobby activity uh, organization that you'd like to mention that you're, you're a part of? Yes. Um, well, I, I own several dogs. I take care of uh, several dogs. Uh, I play Batman. And so we're we're trying to get a lot of our international students to uh, have an uh, a badminton club, but that hasn't you know started yet. Uh, and my wife and I were very involved in our church, and so uh, and along with you know full time work and raising a kid, and that's uh, that gives us a lot of a uh, uh, fun downtime. Well, congrats on the growing family, and and obviously congrats on the upcoming commencement. We're excited to follow your journey, and and we admire the leadership you've put into to Queens Care and all the great things happening for KGI students and alumni there in uh, downtown LA. Thanks, John. Thank you.